Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this channel has tutorial videos uh, which you might find useful and this first series I'm creating is on real estate feasibility. I've been in the real estate industry for 15 years and I've worked on a lot of financial uh, models and valuations. So I want to take you through this process of how to prepare a complex financial model for a real estate asset whether you should invest in this asset, what are the challenges, how to go about the task, what kind of market research you need to do. Uh, also, I'll take you through the components of a mixed use development and try to cover as many aspects as possible. So let's start by first choosing a location for our project. There are real estate uh, projects all over the world and each country has their own standards. Uh, for this sample, we are going to choose Europe and maybe something along the Adriatic coast. You have the southern part of Croatia, you have Montenegro, Albania uh, and also Greece. So let's start uh, by choosing a land parcel somewhere here. And what this means is we'll be using Euro as our currency in the feasibility model and all areas will be in square meters. I will take you through the basics and I'll also tell you how uh, to move between square meter and square feet. So in this location, we will choose a site and then uh, what we want to build here is a mixed use development project. So in this image, you can see several buildings. Uh, so typically one or more buildings will be residential. Uh, this does not have villas, but you could have villas in your development, uh, uh, residential apartments of different sizes. You could have an office property. You could have commercial properties like retail, a hotel, uh, parking, school, and uh, hospital so all these components these asset classes what we call them they complement each other and together they form a mini city where people can live work and play so that's the concept we are looking at uh, these images over here show what a completed project could look like it's uh, very beautiful what we are going to do in this exercise is to test the business feasibility of this project does it make business sense Will it generate any income? What are the returns as an investor? If you're putting money into this project, what returns can you look at? So this is what the series is going to answer. Our model will be prepared in Excel and uh, these are some initial assumptions that we want to use. It's based on secondary market research. I'll be looking at information online and there's a market research section uh, in the video which will cover how I went about the market research for this location. These are some initial assumptions we will use in the model. We will assume that the total land area, the gross land area is 1 million square meters. And I will take you through what is gross floor area, but this is to do with what we are constructing. This is going to be 1.3 million square meters. To purchase this land, it's going to cost the investor 40 million euros. We are targeting 15 to 20 years to develop this project. And as I mentioned, it's a mixed use project. So there will be a residential component, there will be offices, uh, retail, hospitality and some other components and this is uh, depending on the market what the what that location what the people in that location want and why they would buy an apartment there or rent a uh, commercial property there. Some more assumptions uh, to develop this project you need to develop the infrastructure around that and uh, we don't want that to exceed 15% 15, 15 of the development cost. This is just a thumb rule and uh, it depends on what kind of infrastructure you have uh, if you want to have a lake in your mixed use development or have something which is expensive basically it makes the project look more beautiful more desirable but it's going to cost you more for this exercise we will assume it's not going to exceed 15 percent of the total cost and also i'm going to explain the concept of leverage while building the project the investor puts in equity but there's also an option of going to banks and uh, availing a commercial loan. So that actually increases uh, the investor's returns in the project. So we will go through this section also. We will start this feasibility with an area program. I will explain this area program in more detail in following videos, but these are the different components. There's residential asset class, commercial, hospitality, retail, and some other components. Uh, I'm going to assume that the first two years in developing this project will be spent in site clearance and the main infrastructure works. So before we start constructing, 
individual buildings uh, we first want to get some main infrastructure works done main roads trunk infrastructure and then we're going to assume that this project is built in uh, three phases each phase will be five years long so along with the first two years it's a total timeline of 17 years I will also take you through the major project components this model is an advanced model which goes into a lot of detail so just for residential I will have three types of residential products and each product again will have different type of units and this is a kind of, this is a mix which is developed based on the demand for residential in that location there's also commercial we have more than one commercial property more than one hospitality property and in retail we have a retail mall and also there will be some street retail components for the financial model I'll be using Microsoft Excel and uh, this is my model and I have different sheets the first sheet area statement is uh, the area program that I'll be using it has the assumptions for efficiency number of units and so on and we will go into more detail by real estate asset class I have various assumptions the phasing sheet basically shows how the project is going to be built over 17 years as I mentioned before we will build this project in three phases and uh, this shows how the various asset classes what is the start date what is the end date uh, by phase and it's a good idea to phase your project so that beyond a certain point it can be self-funded so what happens is initially there is equity investment and bank loan to fund the construction but as components are sold the cash coming into the project from sales and from rent uh, go into funding the project so what happens is construction is funded and then when there's surplus cash that goes to pay down the bank loan and then there is dividends to investors and that's the return that investors make the inputs tab has the assumptions for cost and sale price rental assumptions inflation and so on and we will go through this in more detail the project cash flows tab has the cash inflows and cash outflows that each component in the project will make over the life uh, lifespan which is 17 years in this case and uh, a negative number here indicates cash being put into the project which is uh, through equity or a bank loan and a positive number indicates the cash that the project is generating so you can see that in the initial years uh, there's negative cash because uh, you need to put in money when you develop the project but uh, here in this case from year six you can see that the number is positive so here the the project is generating positive cash flows but then it again depends on your phasing and for example in year eight there's again a negative cash so we need to balance this and in reality when building this project uh, a lot of cash management uh, is required and so the feasibility helps with that it helps investors in understanding uh, how the project at what periods uh, what cash needs to be injected how many how much dividend is available to them what returns they make uh, project IRR IRR stands for internal rate of return so this is uh, the return which the project makes and I will explain this in more detail later uh, this uh, sheet also has assumptions for your bank loan how much debt you're borrowing versus how much equity you're putting in and also what is the cost of that debt and once you bring in debt basically you're leveraging on bank debt so these are your leveraged cash flows and this has a higher return so we call it equity IRR and you can see this return is higher than the project return so we will go through this in more detail and for someone who is learning uh, to build uh, feasibility models uh, you know pertaining to real estate uh, this is a good place for you to start I'll be covering uh, this in detail uh, from the basics uh, so if you find this useful and this is something you want to follow please like my video please subscribe to my channel and I hope uh, this really helps you in the next video we will look into the area summary section and we we'll look at what is FAR what is GFA and we we'll look at how we can change an area in square meter to square feet so right now we are assuming the land parcel is in Europe so uh, we're using the metric system which is square meters 
but uh, suppose the land parcel was in the US or uh, in India they use the square feet system for area we look at how to convert uh, between square meters and square feet uh, we'll also try and understand this whole section what is GFA in square meter? What is percentage of allowable GFA? What do you mean by efficiency by real estate component? And what is the saleable or leasable area? And this is very important because this forms the foundation of uh, the financial model. And what you typically do is apply, for example, for apartments, you would apply a sale price and a cost price. So a sale price would be applied to the saleable area and the cost is usually on the constructed area, which is the gross floor area. Uh, we'll also look at parking, we'll look at unit mix. And so this will help set the foundation for the feasibility. So I hope you find this useful and I'll see you again in the next video. Thank you.